Good morning and welcome to our final Advent worship in 2020. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for coming to our worship of Advent carols and scripture and traditions. We welcome you. We are glad you are here and let us turn to God in worship today. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to a public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. Hello, my name is Sam Wu and I'm from Taiwan. Uh, I've always grown up in a church environment and I always remember that the Christmas season has always been one of the busiest time of the year just because of how many things are going on during that time. For example, we will go caroling with the church youth group and the church choir by walking or carpooling to people's houses and sing the carols. Um, the churches around town also will host Christmas Eve services every year. I remember one year the churches around town collaborated together and hosted an outdoor Christmas Eve service to reach out to the larger community. Those are very, very busy days, but they are also very good days to remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth 
in Galilee to Judah, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over the flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of God. Follow, follow, rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow the star of Bethlehem, rise up, shepherd, and follow. There's a star in the east on Christmas morn, rise up, shepherd, and follow. It will lead to the place where the Savior's born, Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow, follow. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow the star of Bethlehem. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your sheep and leave your lambs. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your ewes and leave your rams. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow, follow. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow the star of Bethlehem. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. If you take good heed of the angel's word, Rise up, shepherd, and follow. You'll forget your flock, you'll forget your herd. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow, follow. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow the star of Bethlehem. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow, follow, rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow the star of Bethlehem, rise up, shepherd, and follow. Traditions during Advent and Christmas season, for me growing up in the Midwest, involves a lot of family time surrounded by board games, cards, dominoes. This year, Christmas will look really different for me because I'm recently married to a Dominican and our holiday celebrations look different. So if I'm in the Dominican Republic this year for Christmas, traditions would include lots of dancing, and a big family dinner, kind of similar to our Thanksgiving dinners here in the States. 
if I'm able to move to the States with my husband by Christmas, then we'll look forward to bringing our cultures together and building new traditions together. As we have been waiting and longing to move to the same country together, it reminds us of how we wait and long for Jesus' birth and Jesus' return to the earth. And that's what we'll continue to do together. Oh, come, O oh, bright and morning star, and bring us comfort from afar. Dispel the shadows of the night, and turn our darkness into light. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O of all mankind. Bid all our sad division cease, and be yourself a king of peace. Rejoice, As we wait with joy for Jesus Christ, the one who is to come, let us offer prayers to God who sent his Son as the true light into the world. When I say, Lord, hear us, please respond with, Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Holy Mother, gentle spirit, we come to you today. for the coming of Jesus Christ in power and glory, for the coming of wisdom to teach and guide us, for the coming of Emmanuel, the hope of all the peoples, for the peace of the world and for our unity in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayers. For this community, that God would guide us with his truth, fill us with his love, and be with us through our journeys. For the church throughout the world and the faithful in every place, for all our students working in their churches and our alumni around the globe, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayers for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, for justice, peace, and freedom among all peoples of the earth, for the sick and the suffering, for the hungry and the oppressed, for the poor and the homeless, for those in prison, for the least and last and lonely and lost. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayers. For the faithful departed in Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone. For those who have not yet heard your voice, 
for those who are unloved, who feel unloved and unworthy, and yet are children of God. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. For all who are lamenting and mourning today. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayers. joining our voices with the faithful who have gone before us and all of the saints, we say together the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Uh, we can place our trust in this Savior even as we experience the fullness of the brokenness and weariness that this world has to offer. We can place our trust in a Savior who has given us a promise, a promise of a day that he will come again to dwell among us. When all things will be made new, all things will be made right. Justice and righteousness will rule. That is what we celebrate in Advent. That is what we are rejoicing about. That's what we celebrate in this last song. the name 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all may believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Children born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Now go and do the hard work of discipleship wherever you walk. May starlight guide your steps towards this place of wonder. May angels sing their news as you travel to the manger. May promise fill these days as we watch the edge of birth. And may faith tell you Emmanuel will be with us soon. And know that you are not alone for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you always. Amen. Blessings to you in this Advent and Christmas season. See you next year. Thank you.